Yes, Father David, I, I... No, he was. He was a remarkable man. He was an example to us all. Yes. Listen, uh, Father David, I must go, but I want to thank you for everything, and I'll be in touch with you very soon. Good. All right, then. Bye-bye. Maggie, you're back. I'm very happy to see you. Oh, the bishop's staff is in total shock. I guess we're just putting one, one foot in front of another. Would you like to sit down? No, no, I've been on a plane for hours, no, thanks. I understand. So, tell me, how was New Orleans? Did you learn anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, um, about the funeral. Everything's under control? All you have to do is go down there. Yeah, okay, well, no. Look, I really appreciate everything that you've done, except, um, I have no intention of going. Nice. Hey, uh, what train are you taking down to Baltimore? Don't let me disturb you, right? Kevin! Hi, Gus. What do you want? Oh, I don't know. How about some of that red licorice you always had lying around? Kevin, you're the one who said you needed space. Is this your idea of space? We work together. So work. Get out of my face. Where's this coming from? Hey, Lem. Good night, Lem. Good night. Some people. Why are you so hostile? Kevin, I am not being hostile. I'm married, remember? You made a big point of that when you said you wanted to move on with your life. What a cliche. Did I really say that? Oh, you bet you're a bit be. Although what you should have said was that you wanted to move on with your new girlfriend. From what I've seen, there's not much farther you all need right, to go. All right, can we leave Taya out of this? You know, it's this? really hard to do that when you make out with her in the Banner City room on your desk. I went to the public lobby of a ski lodge. What's next? Planning on bringing her to the funeral? I don't know. That might be tacky. Oh, that's never stopped you before. All right, enough. All right. More than enough. I'd like to get back to work. I'll stay out of your face. Just stay out of mine. When did I ever, ever get in your face? Name one time, one single time. Go on, I dare you. Okay. Most recently, when you danced with your husband at Bo's birthday party. And what were you doing with Miss Junior Attorney? Something different. Oh, right. We wouldn't call that dancing, would we? We would call that flaunting. <sighs> you know, Cassie, this is really not the time and really not the place. Oh, yeah? You're wrong. This is the only time and place we've got. And when we're here, we work. Or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Fine. That's what you want? And that's what you want. Great, then it's what we both want. Right. Really hoping that you'll be happy with Taya. The hell you are. What was that? Sorry, I have a deadline to meet. I'm Victoria Carpenter. That qualifies. Hi. Hi. Um, have a seat quickly so I can sit back down. Please. Uh, bless your heart. Are you ill? Oh, just hungover. Well, perhaps you would like to postpone this until tomorrow. No, I don't expect to see any part of tomorrow. If and when I make it into a bed, I may not get up for a day or two. Carpe diem. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you very much. Would you like coffee? Water? Aspirin? None of the above. A gun? 
to put you out of your misery? Does this happen often? With increasing regularity. Does it interfere with your work? Not so far. Well, I'm trying to decide how to go out, come in, and start again. Mm, we'd better work with what we've got. Realistic, isn't it? Since it would appear that you are indeed exactly what I've got. Clint uh, tells me the deal is contingent on your approval. Are you impressed yet? Why were you late, if I may ask? You just did. I, uh, I fell among bad companions, but I managed to escape. <clears throat> so, uh, did uh, I blow my chances due to uh, insufficient punctuality? I'm reserving judgment. My editor-in-chief wants you on this paper. Hmm. I like Clint. In fact, my entire staff seems to have been struck dumb with awe at the very thought of your presence in the building. You are a legend in your own time, Mr. Hayes, and we here at the Banner are quite prepared to invest in that. The question seems to be, are you? Well, I'm an investigative reporter. I don't invest in legends. And it's Mel. M-E-L. Mel, I'm well aware of your reputation as a charmer and a writer. What seems to be in question is your dedication to your craft. Who the hell do you think I was named after? I have no idea. Is it relevant? I seem to remember there was a Saint Mel. <laughs> you better believe it. Saint Mel was a fellow traveler of Saint Patrick, which made it legitimate for my mother. As far as my dad was concerned, I was named after Mel Ott. Mel Ott. New York Giants, 1926-1947. A gentleman and a hell of an outfielder. I met him once. I never saw him play. So you were named for a ball player. Oh, of course you were. Your father was a sports writer. Yeah, a Giants fan. So one of the best things about my childhood is when he'd show up at noon recess on the other end of the chain link fence at St. Ignatius Playground, and I knew he'd sprung me, and we were headed for the game. I could count on that. 10, 15 spring afternoons every year. Twice in my life, I saw my old man cry when they shot John Kennedy. And one morning, I was about 13, he picked up the newspaper and uh, saw that Mel Ott had died in a car crash someplace in the South. It was a single column, front page. And my father stood there Tears running down his face. Not a sound out of him. This is a, a damn peculiar job interview. Well, don't expect me to ask you if you can write. No, no, I can write. It's one of the few things left I can depend on. Let me hear your thoughts on dedication. In that area, I have two role models. Mm -hmm. In 20 years, Ott hit 304, including 511 homers and 1,861 RBIs, and my dad never missed a deadline his entire working life. That's dedication to craft. Mm -hmm. So, Mel, Hayes, what do you have left in common with them except your first and last names? If you're put off by the formality of the full cathedral service... I'm put off by the hypocrisy of the whole thing. I understand, and I will make excuses for you. Just come to the graveside service. I don't want to be a part of it. Oh, God, look, you're upset, man. How do you feel about lies, Andrew? Do you condone them? No. Me neither. What happened in New Orleans? <laughs> oh, boy, a lot. You went to Ian's mother's family home, right? Uh-huh. Yep, and the whole thing was fiction. All of it. Nothing but lies from the get-go. Please, sit down and talk Stop with me here, Maggie, down, please. Okay? This is what I'm looking for. Let's see if we can find that picture. There it is. See, I was right. Uncle John and Aunt Clarissa's mm -hmm. wedding portrait. 
You remember how I commented on how strange Daddy looked, like he wanted to be somewhere else? Well, he sure did. He wanted to be with the woman he loved, only it wasn't my mother. Now, wait a minute. I take that back. It was my mother, it just wasn't this mother. Welcome to the Twilight Zone, Andrew. Who are we talking about here? Oh, man? Eleanor Armitage. Yeah, that's right. And here's another shocker. Guy Armitage isn't Ian's father. Three guesses who is. You don't need three guesses, do you, Andrew? Come on. I'll give you 30 seconds. The right answer lived in an all expense paid vacation to Baltimore. Now that's a clue. Come on. Uncle John. Give that man a cupid doll. He figured it out. But there's still a little piece of missing, right? Ian and Maggie are brother and sister. Twin, in fact. Separated at birth. Don't take the Lord's name in vain just because your dearly departed uncle was a bastard. <sighs> Wait a minute, that's not right. Ian and I are technically the bastards. How does that work anyway? I mean, if your parents are never married and your parents' partner never legally adopts you, doesn't that make you illegitimate? Stop it, Maggie. Please stop it. Okay. I'm sorry, I just... I figure if I stay angry, then I don't have to feel anything else. You don't need to comfort me, all right? You don't need to say anything because there really isn't anything you can say. John. Uh, John. Of all people. He must have been a divinity student at the time. Does youth excuse it? No, of course it doesn't. Hmm. If you lost someone, would you let them go? Would you give up one of your children and raise the other in a lie? Would you marry someone that you absolutely did not love and make her life miserable for what? To be a bishop? I think that Ian's mother had something no, to do no, with this decision. No, no, that's my mother, Eleanor. Yeah, she lied too. See, there was a little money trouble with the family. She was the bartered bride. All very noble from their did point of view. Did Ian know sure. anything about You're this? Clueless. So this is why Eleanor wanted to meet John in St. Martin, maybe because she was ill she knew that she was and she felt it was time for the truth oh, to come out deathbed confessions not for daddy but you said yourself there was something that your you father you know what wanted. i think i think that the bishop saw me and ian together and wanted to avoid the truth at all costs even if it meant he died and took his secret with him i'm sorry yeah you know what i'm sorry too i'm really sorry for myself, for Ian, for this whole damn family. <sighs> Mom? Daddy? Are you supposed to be home? Huh? What am I, punching in a time clock now? Oh, you don't look so hot. Thank you very much. Well, you're still not feeling so well, are you? I'm not in a mood to be cross-examined, if that's what you mean, no. Sorry, I just spent hours at the doctor's office waiting for Larry to come out of an emergency. Good. I don't mean good that you had to wait. I just mean it's good that you went to see him. So, did you tell him that you fainted at the diner? Child, why do you think I made the appointment? I sat around all of the day reading newspaper articles and magazine articles about how to lure your loved one into flossing daily. I mean, where do they come up with the idea for these things? What did Dr. Wallet say? He said I looked a trifle peaked, and then he sh pricked me with a whole bunch of needles and removed most of my vital fluids and said he was going to run some tests. Basically, he thinks I'm overdoing it and that I should eat better, sleep more, and work less. <laughs> well, it sounds like good advice. <sighs> Actually, I feel like I could sleep for about a week. So, why don't you go upstairs and collapse? But don't you go anywhere. I'll get it. Probably a court clerk with some more work for you. I'll sign for it. Oh, Rachel, how nice. Uh, your mother left a message asking me to return these files from Antonio's trial. Could you give them to her? You can give them to her yourself. Hello, Taya. I was expecting to leave these for you in your mailbox. I'll bet. Uh, I hope this doesn't mean you're still not feeling well. Can it, Taya? 
Excuse me? This sweetness and light routine you can't con me with courtesy. Not after going behind my back to Javier Perez at Statesville Prison. Not after signing on to defend our local murderess in an obvious move to hang out your own shingle in Landview. If you object? Me? Object? No. Have you heard an objection come from me? Absolutely not. The more the merrier. But beware. Because you won't get the same treatment you did as my junior associate. I'm not there for your protection anymore. You are all on your own, hanging out in the breeze. And it could be very cold and lonely, believe me. But you'll find that out for yourself. Oh, and another thing. Just because Landview isn't big, bad New York City doesn't mean you can lord it over us local yokels. I could eat you for breakfast, muchachita. And that was just a taste of my courtroom theatrics, an appetizer, as it were, something that you will probably come across. Thank you for bringing me the files. But if you ever so much as look at a client of mine without my permission, I will bring you up on charges in front of the bar, and that will be the end of your super little budding career. We play by the rules here in this burg, and we don't take kindly to anyone muddying our watering hole. And now I think I'll go lie down. Mom hasn't been herself lately. And my mother? No, no. The woman I used to call my mother, she wasn't very happy. When I was a little girl, I used to catch her watching me. Now I know why. It's no wonder she drank herself to death. One thing this doesn't explain is why Uncle John was so hard on you. Well, think about it. Every time Daddy looked at me, he was reminded of what he wanted and couldn't have. He was reminded of his mistakes, and Daddy did not like to make mistakes. You know, he used to say that guilt was a useless commodity. Well, he was guilty as sin. I wonder if he found any release in the confessional. I doubt it. He liked to inflict his self-mortification on the rest of us. He called it discipline, though. It's all right. I think he needed to make us suffer. Just tr try to remember, Maggie. This man suffered right along with you. It doesn't help me forgive him, Andrew. Just think about the poor man, and I know it's difficult for you to accept, mm -hmm. and I can understand why, but I truly believe at the end of his life he realized what he had done. And it was more, way more than his heart could bear. Well, fine. Let the devil take him then, okay? But don't ask me to go to his funeral and pray for his soul. That was shrewd. Invoking Ott and my old man in your cause? It wasn't meant to be shrewd. And whose cause is this really, yours or mine? You see, the banner can survive without you, even though we would be very happy to have you aboard. But you have to be able to give me some assurance that you will not self-destruct at the expense of my newspaper. Well, I should check out my track record. I did. Will it hold up? Will a meteor strike the Earth next week? Why do you want to work in Landview? Huh? You've been swimming in some pretty big ponds. Washington, New York, Paris. Hmm? It's been suggested it might save my life. We're not the Betty Ford Clinic. I'm interested in a job. That's my road to salvation. Have you got a job? blame me for being suspicious. If all you want is to get out of Washington, you could have had your pick of a lot of newspapers who have many more awards on their walls. Does the name Ed Crane Pool mean anything to you? Let me hazard a guess. Another ball player. Yeah, he was the first Met. Uh, what Ott was to my father, Crane Pool was to me. Ed Crane Pool played in 1962 in the worst ball club in Major League history. And seven years later, he was a world champion. I don't think the banner is the worst in the league. Not by a long shot. But you're not world champions either. You want awards? Then give me a desk when I need one, an unlimited supply of notebooks, and absolute unqualified support for every word I write. And I'll see to it that you get the pennant, and then some. Drink doesn't seem to have affected your self-confidence. So how about it? 
thick. I see. Now you're putting your own conditions on the table. It's pretty basic stuff. Oh, the desk and the notebooks, yes. The unconditional support has to be earned. I see it as an act of faith. If I'm prepared to fall on a grenade for you and your paper, I want to be sure you do the same thing for me. Even if that includes taking a lot of flack from your friends and family. Not to mention your lawyers. Especially your lawyers. Can you handle that? Who is interviewing whom? It's congenital. Something you should know about me, I'm not impressed with authority. Oh, really? I could have guessed that. I've seen a lot of empty suits in my day. Anyone can call themselves a publisher. Well, you can't be too careful. Sure you can. Miss all the fun? No joy in Mudville? May I ask you a personal question? How personal? Did you ever play ball? Yeah, high school, college. Were you any good? Yep. No professional aspirations then? I was scouted by the Mets. I could taste it there for about 10 seconds. What happened? That's the oldest story in the book. I couldn't hit a major league curve. Good. Then you'll know better than to ever throw me one. Because I'll take you downtown if you do. Can you handle that, Hayes? <sighs> what the hell? Welcome to the banner, Mel. Satisfactory. <laughs> so, what clinched it that I was a failed ball player? to go tell Clint, and you can dicker with him on the particulars. Sure thing. And, uh, as long as you're not, uh, using your office. Vic? I'm really glad that you're planning to stick around. Guess you're going to look for an apartment now, huh? Or has Kevin already suggested that you move in with him? Actually, I was the one who suggested it. Really? Kevin does like a woman who uh, moves with the initiative. Well, he wasn't very enthusiastic, but I intend to help him change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin doesn't stand a chance. I know Kevin. As well as uh, Cassie does. What is up with Kevin and Cassie? I can't figure that out. Oh, great. I was hoping that you could clue me in. I mean, does he tend to obsess over every woman he can't have? Well, no. I, I consider Kevin to be pretty, you know, pretty out there. Why did... Why did you guys break up, anyway? Oh. Um... Kevin was never really my great love. You know what I mean? It... Anyway, somebody else kind of came along. For him? No, for me. Oh. Came and understood, and we're still friends. Actually, that somebody else didn't turn out to be the love of my life after all. He's now in England, and I'm here. Mm -hmm. Here we both are. Smart, gorgeous, and unattached. I mean, is life fair? If you want my opinion about Cassie, I'm gonna take a quote from my mother. You could eat her for breakfast. So go for it. Thank you. I think I will. I have to give the benediction at this funeral. I don't know how I'm going to pray for his soul to rest in peace, Maggie. Guess I understand your decision not to attend. I don't know. Maybe I should make some kind of an excuse. No, or... don't do that, Andrew. Don't. Not, not, not because of him, but for you. Listen. You are a really good person. You know that? That is so rare. You bring out the best in people. You probably brought out the best in Daddy. I bet that when he looked at you, he saw the man he could have been if he hadn't met Eleanor. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You'd have made a heck of a nut. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Some other life. No, I'm intruding. No, no, you're not. You got my message to meet here. Is there a problem? 
Give me more of a problem than we've already got? No, I just... I just, um... thought you might like to get to know your cousin better. Father didn't really want to acknowledge me either. Oh, well, hey, look. He never acknowledged me either, and I was right there. I think he acknowledged both of you, you know, in his heart. Oh, and I say, Cousin Andrew has got to be the only decent and good member of this family. Listen, I, I don't mean to turn it into like a mutual admiration society, but I'm looking at two remarkable people. And yes, I do believe that Uncle John is with God. He's in a state of perfection. He's able to accept the love and the, and the pride that I know he had for both of you. Well, thank you. That feels like some sort of benediction. I shall try to hang on to that next time Guy rags me about my miserable incompetence. If you don't mind my asking, how did he handle the news? Did he, did he suspect the truth all along? No, oh, I have no idea. I have no intention of asking him. Ever? No, it's none of his business. You mean after... After all the damage that has been done, you are actually going to perpetuate this lie? Well, I wish you hadn't put it quite like that, but, um... Yes. Well, then I will put it a little bit stronger. This lie is like, it's like a cancer. It, it, if you don't cut it out, it spreads. Well, Andrew, I'm sure that Ian has his reasons. Oh, it's quite simple. I want revenge. If he's not destructive, Ian, walk away from him. You see, it's not only revenge for myself that I am after. He treated my mother abominably. And now she has given me the weapon and the emotional armor to combat that Gorgon. And when I have pulled him down as far as I can, then I will tell him why. And I will look at him in the eye and I will laugh in his face. See, I'm not always the nicest person in the world. You sure you want to welcome me into your family? How does a person get an advanced copy of apartment listings from town? You remembered my name. Apartment listing? Is there an echo in here? Sorry. That's the word I was looking for. But uh, you're going to have to do better than that. In fact, I've decided you owe me a major apology. I come here to collect. Just how long do you plan on uh, hanging around? Well, I, I just I just can't believe that he, he didn't show up. I mean, I don't understand what happened. I am so sorry, Clint. About what? Vicky, about what? <laughs> about this whole Mel Hayes fiasco. I mean, I can't imagine what happened to him, and I'm sure any minute you're going to hear from him. I've already heard quite a bit from him. He called. I knew it. I mean, he's a brilliant journalist, and he didn't get where he is by being totally unreliable. Um, what did he say? Where is he? In my office, probably asleep on my couch, which is where I found him a little while ago. And I would appreciate it if you would haul him away so that I can get back to work. Yeah. Vicky, please, keep an open mind about this, because it's the opportunity of a lifetime to have a newspaper man of Mel's caliber working ex exclusively for the banner, please. Don't turn him down out of hand just because he showed up a teeny bit late. And thoroughly hung over. Actually, I gave him the job against my better judgment. You did? Oh, v Vicky, that is wonderful. That really is wonderful. I knew this would work out. You're going to be very grateful to me. Don't push it, Dorian. Actually, I should know a lot better than to ask you this, but what exactly is your interest in the man. 
You interviewed him. Surely you know. Do me a favor and go and collect what is left of Mr. Hayes before I change my mind. My pleasure. You won't be sorry. Now, why did that sound like a curse from the Wicked Witch of the West? <laughs> well, you know, for once, I think I might uh, agree with Dorian. I think he can make quite a difference around here. Yeah, good difference or bad difference? Well, he might ruffle a few feathers, but uh, we can handle him. We? Oh, no. No, Clint. From now on, Mel Hayes is your responsibility. And I hope you enjoy every minute of it. I'm afraid I'm going to have to invoke some family solidarity, even though we're not very comfortable with that sort of thing yet. You want us to lie to Guy for you? Yeah. It's a lie of omission. I don't want you to tell him the truth until I've told him. Please, please, Maggie, let me tell him in my own time. All right. I have to tell my wife. She's part of the family, and I suppose I can treat this as a confession and be bound to silence. Thank you. I do understand your reservations, and I will make every effort to make sure you're not put on the spot. So, that's that. Now what? <laughs> hey, it's okay if you're not used to this. Ian and I have had 24 hours to get used to, and we're still in shock. Of okay. course, Max just keeps shaking his head. Come over here. Come on. Take a look in the mirror. Right over here. Let's take a look at the next generation of carpenters. Here's hoping we do better than the last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's start by putting the past to rest. Go to Daddy's funeral? Yeah. There's a reason for these ceremonies. They provide closure. Are you planning on going? Well, I wasn't, but I will if you will. Okay. Great. I'll call Father David. He was a bit overwhelmed. Yes, overwhelmed. It works for me. Yeah. Listen, if I haven't said it in the exact words, I just want... Welcome to the family, Ian. Thank you. Mm. Come here. You have been on my mind all day. I realize I may have upset you when I said that I... Well, I wasn't ready to move in with you yet. Why are you speaking so softly? Because there's people working here. The only person left is Cassie. Who has a deadline to me. I can call up those apartment listings on my computer for you. Great. You know, you were, um, you were probably right about us moving in together. I mean, why rush things, you know? Hey, I'm still up for apartment hunting. If you want the company. Your company? Mm. Anytime. Wow. Look at all those rentals. Yeah. I'll print us out a copy. How does this sound? Large, sunny, one bedroom with a great view, loads of charm, no pets. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I want to find a place you like too, Kevin. Come on, after all, I hope you're going to be spending a lot of time there. Mm, me too. I guess I really was bothering her. Nah, she's probably just a little on edge. There was a death in her husband's family. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Well, there's no reason that you should. <laughs> Voila, here we go. Now, yeah. about that major apology. Yeah. Why don't you tell me exactly what it is that I can do to make up for my churlish behavior? Right here? Right now? We did try that once. Yes, we did. I have a better idea. So do I. <laughs> Mel? Mel? 
Oh, you must have been brilliant. <laughs> but why does that surprise me? You threw Vicky for a loop. I could tell. Mm -hmm. Mel, mm -hmm. <laughs> congratulations. I got two questions for you. Yes yeah. and yes. You're such a trusting soul. You know better. You know, I prefer to ask the questions before I hear the answers. It's an old reporter's habit. Humor me on that. Go ahead. But my answer's still going to be the same. Is there a dark and quiet place in this new hometown of mine with a bartender of skill who knows how to make a pure, cold, perfect vodka martini? Yes. <sighs> Will you take me there immediately? Yes. There. You see, I can anticipate your every need. Even that. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go, Molly. 